Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about liquid lens. It's a kind of the hot topic right now. So let's dive right into it. So what's the idea behind this? The idea is very simple. All the lens element right now that we utilize, it does not matter whether it's a, uh, you know, standard lens, prime lens, telephoto lens, whichever lens we have, inherently the glass element itself, aka the actual lens itself, it's fixed. So basically this puppy is fixed to 51. It has only one place where it can focus, nowhere else. So you may be like, okay, then how the heck we achieve actual autofocus? How can we achieve, uh, you know, uh, basically zoom on that? Basically we move the whole damn thing. Basically you have lenses, eyepiece and objective, think of it that way. And you move these two things to achieve variability. Basically how they, that's how you achieve focus. And then you add a third element, fourth element, in some cases, seven, nine elements. Then you can achieve like a zoom and other functionality. So basically every functionality requires you to add another lens to it and heck you will might also have other lenses that may look well, like very weird it's like why the heck it's invertly curved is generally there for correcting uh, chromatic aberration so that's the whole point right now all our lenses all our glass based lenses they have fixed focus like the element itself cannot change you can move the element back and forth but you can't change the element if once the element has been ground uh, made into final product that's it done if let's say 48 millimeter the end it's only 48 millimeter no matter what you do only thing you can do is break it nothing else now if we can reach a point where somehow with some magical property we can make this lens itself change it will remove so many moving parts from normal prime lens let alone zoom lens right? it will like okay it will take like uh, something that costs two thousand dollar or five thousand dollar make it into five dollar equipment so inherently no moving part would be needed and it will make it silent and fast software because we have to move so many goddamn things we have uh, like ludicrously complicated motors uh, voice coil drivers like uh, god knows how many other technologies are there in your modern lenses which has zoom autofocus and uh, uh, basically image stabilization you don't even want to open that puppy up it's like it's a like a rat's nest of electrical wiring and engineering now again it's mind-bogglingly awesome that we have achieved it but point is it's very complicated at all because we can't change the goddamn lens it's like lens is like no i am 48 that means i'm 48 so what if we can change that what if we can say no you shall become whatever i desire you to become so we come to the liquid lens so what is the working behind it basically you start out with two liquid now these two liquid has to have one very clear function they should not mix no matter what you do they should not mix if your liquid mixes the end so basically uh, for simplified reasons and again uh, there is some truth to it people generally start with water and oil now what does that translate to that simply translates to you have a boundary when you have these two things you have a boundary now that boundary is very interesting that's happening because of surface tension and other aspects also you can tune that boundary so if the boundary is straight you have just a you know you, you just have a window nothing fancy no hoo-ha but what if you put a concave uh, surface there it becomes a wider lens what if you put a basically convex there you get a different kind of focal length basically if you can change the surface uh, basically how the curvature of that surface is there you can achieve whatever you want to achieve now again within a range of course you cannot expect this puppy to actually bulge out of the cell this whole thing is packed into a cell so cell is the limiting factor and uh, do not expect these cells to be made very large simply because it requires a lot of voltage to drive these things they do not require too much ampere so you can have this battery powered or usb part but they require voltage to give you a context of that uh, usb webcam that utilizes this liquid lens requires upwards of 60 volts so let that sink in. Now again, we have the technology, silicon technology to do that is just like, it's a bit tedious. So you have to have two liquids that have a different refractive index and but they will not emulsify, they will not mix into each another. And then they also have different electrical properties. Otherwise, you cannot drive them. And then you will sandwich them into one system. Now again, uh, most systems generally utilize on only one liquid ele uh, glass element. But for some industrial session where you want like everything, you want autofocus and zoom, you may have a scenario where you have two or three of these elements or even four uh, if you are feeling very generous. So that's how a cell is made. Now this cell, this quote unquote new element, this liquid glass element allows you to achieve whatever you want to achieve within its uh, manufacturing ability. Basically, of course, it's not going to pop out of somewhere. Uh, there are some designs which work a bit differently, achieves that, you know, squishing out. But this is the liquid lens one. Other things have, they have other benefits, other side effects. Now, because you are controlling this puppy with electrical fields, you have the ability to move the lens 
inside the liquid like the behavior of the liquid uh, as a image stabilization also basically the lens element will be fixed but the lens uh, basically light how it's bending that can be changed so uh, the engineers basically the professors who have figured this out they showed a demonstration where they, are, they have the lens element the, like this puppy it's fixed it's not moving there is no image stabilization on it but they are image stabilizing electrically by send, sending basically the lens inside the liquid is changing so they can achieve uh, basically image stabilization better than anything else just by bending the lens itself so it opens ludicrously large avenues of things that we cannot even imagine or flat out impossible to do with a fixed lens system only liquid lens system can do that and uh, in industrial world basically manufacturing industry they have been utilizing this puppy from 1980s so uh, like it's not a new technology it's old technology it's just like silicon was not good enough where you can just go and ask any top like, hey can you put 70 volts in my pockets uh, but now we have the technology and the sensors that are good enough advanced enough where even the tiny apertures are no longer an issue we can get amazing quality out of it and if done correctly you can achieve a point where it will not even have chromatic abrasion i do not know how it's even feasible or possible but apparently you can achieve that so uh, it does not require you to have a, like a remove uh, like a whole optical stage that requires that is needed to remove chromatic abrasion it's like how it's like it's a freaking magic if it's done correctly it's magic like and it has been done correctly it's just like uh, if you try to get a developer kit the developer kit is ten thousand dollars now, what abilities we can have if you achieve this? Well, first thing, super high speed focusing speed because there is no uh, physical thing that is moving back and forth. It's just a liquid surface tension moving and that's also in, inside a fixed medium. Um, it can do it very fast. Now, again, there is an actual limit. You can't exp uh, exceed the speed of light. So there is an inherent limitation, but compared to everything else that will top out, let's say 100 mm per second, at best case scenario, this puppy goes into gigahertz. To give you a context of that, uh, think of this, there is a high speed camera you can set your high speed camera to run at let's say 4000 frame per second awesome now the lens is so fast so accurate that you can be like okay one frame take uh, the wing that is close by second take close different third different that's it now you have stacked these images now you make a video output that is 1000 frame per second and you have everything in focus that's how fast these things are they can achieve focus in high speed cameras which are working at 8000 frames per second even even higher than that so these things are idiotically fast so that's why you will see rumors people talking about like how i is working on something that is as fast as human eye this puppy can exceed human eye on a level that's like flat out impossible to achieve you cannot physically move something that fast like you can move it it just won't be accurate so this puppy can achieve that it has silent because inherently there is nothing moving it's just like liquid you know interacting differently it's not moving that's like that's why our eyes don't make noise when it's auto focusing it's the lens is getting squished and pulled squished and pulled so it's silent no moving part that also makes it inherently far more robust because there is nothing fragile inside it and zoom range and flexibility is almost unbelievable because you can have one lens that can give you 4x telephoto zoom and almost a macro lens and here's the it's not like took 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 it's not uh, like you know unit size basically lens one lens two lens three no no it's just like complete zoom you get completely it's like optical zoom how you properly get to zoom it is exactly like that small and compact now that is good thing for mobile phones bad thing for large cameras do not expect this technology to ever make into large format system simply because if you have a small place where you can make a, the diameter basically how the diameter has to be very small uh, people are saying that at best case scenario you can make it as like three this wide but the voltage required would go upwards of like ludicrously like around 150 volt to 600 volt and because we are in, in a gravitational field we inherently cannot make it larger because gravity will simply uh, force the liquid differently it's like gravity will win at that side. surface tension will no longer have enough tension in it to fight against gravity although in space we can make amazingly large size and voltage also won't be an issue so do not get your hope up that i can achieve this in like a i can see that in compact lens uh, compact cameras because the sensors are small it can be done it's just like why would anybody do that if you can put in compact just put in a mobile phone so it has amazing abilities when it comes to speed there is nothing that com it comes even close to it and the fact that it can achieve uh, almost zero aberrations it's like mind-bogglingly awesome so what we can expect in the future one thing if 
its full potential because be mindful i have been reading this sort of articles from 2008 that uh, you know liquid lens will replace uh, all standard optics in mobile phones because again it's perfectly suited and we have been utilizing it from 1980s it's just like it took time to get here and not to mention right now only uh, again this video will come out after one week but uh, everything right now is very early stage it will take a whole production pipeline to change in order to utilize its full uh, basically potential from software because it has the ability to achieve what we call computational photography with a depth stacking now I will explain that further but the point is if we ever achieve what this puppy can actually achieve like this engineering capability is like what I can actually do versus what software can do because many times you have a camera that can do amazing things the software is like no I will not let you do that remove those things like if the software actually utilize what these lenses can do flat out uh, mobile cameras flat out will destroy almost every pro grade camera i'm talking pro grade like of course there will be some benefits there but it won't be uh, significant enough where people will be like why i'm buying like you know why i'm buying two thousand uh, dollar basically sony a7s3 no it's three thousand five hundred why i'm buying that expensive when it has like a ten times more limitation than my mobile phone and it has mobile phone has much better touch screen so flat out this puppy if done correctly large optics the core selling point of a smartphone uh, basically it's not smartphone as in like interchangeable lens camera it's just that big glass that no longer will hold any value so flat out this is this will end the camera industry so flat out so right now large optics are saving the interchangeable lens industry they will no longer be able to do that flat out the end go home all the companies will simply pull out their hand basically how samsung pulled out their hand from a uh, photo uh, interchangeable lens camera market sony will do that uh, panasonic will do that uh, olympus already did that you get the point so basically this will end the camera industry if it's ever utilized to its maximum capacity i do not expect that puppy to happen anytime soon but given how quickly trends are coming into mobile industry and becoming a real thing like folding was a joke like few years ago ah, folding phones we may have now there are products you can buy of course you have to be idiotically rich to buy it but how quickly we went from concept to actual device you can buy in the market that was ludicrously fast the same thing would have taken like you know a whole decade before uh, it reached to a point where it's like no there is actual prototype now we are like we are achieving the price will be half by the, like think of this way how cheap uh, folding phones will be in the next five years so flat out if this uh, potential is ever utilized the end for camera industry now of course there will be still a lot of people who will like this like the feel like the look and all that just just there won't be enough of them to sustain a large multi million dollar corporation and computational photography with depth stacking will remove the main advantage that blurry background the reason the blurry background looks uh, so lame right now is just like blur is applied uniformly because lens can't do other than that it's like okay i can defocus it but because liquid lens can defocus throughout the whole range it's like okay infinity it will take a slice give that to the computer this is this should be always be blur infinity always blur okay that's a slice then it's going to give another slice same way it's going to do let's say 30 slice or 50 slice depending on how fast the processors are it can give you that many slice and then computer only gonna run the algorithm which slice has the uh, you know highest separation uh, of character basically the person can you detect that that is super easy to do with ai now because it has uh, layers of that stacking now you have depth map which has actual depth of it so basically the uh, slice that you got from the infinite you will have the maximum blur applied on that the slice you got a bit closer to that you will have that fall off that slice fall off that way you will have true uh, um, basically background blur that will match a lens of let's say f1.2 and it will look truly good it will have that like if you are tilted like this part will be in focus and that will be out of focus that will be out of focus that can be achieved it won't be like okay i'm like this but like this is also in focus this is also in focus no it won't have that it will have that slice effect which we get in actual lens so flat out if computational photography with depth stacking can be done now be mindful we are already achieving something rudimentary to this by utilizing three or five stacking with exposure this was the selling point of pixel phones by that stacking exposures stacking exposure they were getting amazing outputs uh, imagine the same thing same stacking technology but utilizing blur the end flat out you will have very hard time selling anyone is like why the heck i have to you know pay five thousand dollars for a lens it's like why like my mobile phone can do better than that and if it ever became cheap yeah god help you so flat out if this technology ever reaches maturity and properly utilizing mobile phone and comes down to let's say a mobile phone that i can afford the end for camera industry the end so this was my presentation on liquid lens. I hope you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.